So it's great speaking here. Uh, thanks to the organizers. Uh, uh, I'm more obedient than some speakers. I, I will speak on the blackboard, but, <laughs> but uh, if it will be a disaster, so maybe that should be told. Uh, I'm responsible <laughs> for this. So I never gave the talk on this topic on the blackboard. So I hope I will cope with all these pictures, etc. Uh, the most complicated formulas I wrote here, uh, the, most, the longest formulas. Uh, hope the rest will be only, only pictures, or all the pictures. Okay, so um, the subject of my talk I will uh, I develop a little bit uh, with respect to what I gave in the announcement. It's the capability of Lano radicals for Kipurian mills and sufficient CFT. And I decided to skip uh, the review of all the results which are obtained in efficient CFT. There are already quite many non trivial beautiful results, but I will concentrate on uh, on the origins of integrability in an equals 4 young mills uh, uh, using this fishnet limit uh, of, uh, of uh, n equals 4 to the young mills. Uh, and then I will, uh, so I will uh, find the Lagrangian, fishnet Lagrangian, the mod of fishnet, fishnet Lagrangian uh, stemming from four dimensional. Uh, and it was for uh, uh, super conformal Young Mills theory. Uh, but uh, then I will try to first explain why this fission of the is integrable, and then I will try to, <coughs> to generalize it. I will show you uh, how it can be generalized on other dimensions, on uh, uh, other field con uh, contents. Uh, it will be quite a uh, quite a um, uh, general net of fishnets, <laughs> fishnet CFTs. Um, so, to, uh, uh, so, let me start from just exposing once again the uh, Lagrangian of uh, n equals 4 super radius. It's all written here. Uh, you have the uh, one field and the you know, then three scattered fields, uh, three fermions, super partners, um, and you have um, sometimes uh, these three scatters are denoted like x, y, z, z. I will use both notations, phi, j, and x, y, z. Uh, so you have this typical, uh, the first line are just uh, naked terms, and the second line uh, encodes all interactions, of course, up to complex quantities, which you should have. Uh, so you can, you can notice that you can write it always in terms of certain commutators, uh, product of commutators in scalar fields, where you have recovery interactions also in terms of commutators, uh, Etc. Uh, now, uh, <coughs> probably almost all of you know that the uh, platter limit of this theory is integrable and that it can be demonstrated uh, perturbatively in perturbation theory. Uh, you can map the perturbation theory on a certain spin chain, at least in a few first orders. Then uh, we know that. ADS dual of this theory, and there we also know the integrability, uh, where the integrability appears at least in the quasi-classical limit, uh, it can be demonstrated explicitly. Uh, but for general couplings, it's still a mystery. Where, where does it come from? Uh, uh, of course, now we uh, uh, we have even the full integrability scheme, at least for the spectrum, for calculation of the spectrum. The quantum spectral curve, which connects both sides of duality, strong coupling and weak coupling, and in some sense it, it, it interpolates 
uh, from one to another, but it's not a proof because of interoperability because uh, both uh, AGS CFT, uh, CFT correspondence and interoperability at arbitrary lambda, uh, at arbitrary coupling in this theory is still a mystery. Uh, and the Fishman CFT uh, suggests some uh, yet another limiting case of uh, super young mills uh, where the integrability can be demonstrated explicitly. And it's quite a non trivial limit. Uh, it leads to these fish net CFTs which are integrable at any coupling, explicitly integrable at any coupling. That's what I'm going to, to demonstrate. But first, um, I have to, uh, to generalize superior mills to, uh, uh, to gamma twisted action. Uh, so this was invented many years ago uh, in the papers of Lee Strassler, uh, Lunin Mendesena, uh, Michael Troiban. Um, uh, and uh, it's a very simple uh, generalization uh, of uh, endocles for young mills and also integrable. Say, quantum spectral curve can be generalized to this case easily. Uh, so, in fact, uh, the gamma twisting consists of uh, replacing all the commutators in this theory by Q commutators. <coughs> this simple formula, where QAB is a factor, QAB is a factor uh, which depends on the uh, arc charges of, of two fields, including the commutator, and here we introduce also the three parameters, gamma. Uh, 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, which are new couplings in this series, the twisting parameters. Uh, to clarify a little bit the meaning of this, um, of this deformation, let's consider one of the terms. Like one of the <coughs> terms which are here is simply this uh, product of the commutators. Uh, if you write it explicitly, we have six terms, I work on this three. Uh, and those are vertices in a perturbation theory. Yes? Uh, we can draw them in the following way. For example, this vertex uh, corresponds to quark interaction. But you have to draw arrows because the fields are complex. The propagators have direction. Uh, by red, uh, uh, the red propagators are, correspond to x and uh, y to z. So we have uh, here, we are oriented, for example, from x to z, uh, from x to z in the clockwise, anti-clockwise way. Uh, another vertex is almost the same, but here it's uh, oriented in the clockwise way. Uh, so the, arrows of the arrows of the clock. Uh, and then you have many other terms where the lines sort of, sort of scatter <coughs> of each other in this way. Uh, now, if you Q deform, you simply replace this commutator by Q commutators by this scheme. Q is one of the tools defined here. Uh, and what you will get, you will get a <coughs> factor of U square here and the factor of U one of <coughs> Where there and nothing else here we will get it's, it's easy to see uh, so um, already we have and so in, uh, for these uh, vertices we have uh, factors to square and q minus 2 and here nothing so only when the lines cross you have some factors mm -hmm. Um, now, I want to demonstrate that these are sort of uh, topological factors on the body of every, uh, every planar graph. They don't really change Feynman graphs, uh, but they just assign some factors uh, depending on Qs to various Feynman graphs, uh, helping to distinguish various sets of graphs. Mainly, uh, to give an, an idea how it happens, Let's take graph 
simple graphs uh, with topology of cylinder plumber graphs. Um, so suppose you have this uh, X field uh, going here, so it's a line of propagators, and then we try to to draw uh, some Z line of propagators. So this is X, yes? X line. Uh, Z line of propagators which interacts with this one. So you can have, for example, uh, uh, this vertex where it scatters, so maybe this one. Um, from, uh, but you have what vertex here. Then you can, for example, cross it and go back. Uh, and uh, this is this and that vertex. And uh, you can also go around the cylinder, say, you can cross it once again, as an example. And then you, uh, you come back here. This is one of possible final graphs. So notice that uh, S conserves the factors Q, the twist, twist factors. This vertex, of course, doesn't, con uh, doesn't uh, contribute. And these two don't contribute either because you have clockwise and anti-clockwise ver uh, vertex, it doesn't contribute. So the only vertex which uh, contributes is this one. Because you cross it once and then you go around the cylinder. So already you can feel that uh, there are specific graphs here uh, which uh, are weighted with cubes. <coughs> and the idea of, uh, of the, the idea of the uh, fishnet limit, which was uh, first, which appeared in uh, my paper with uh, Dr. Gunn, eight years ago maybe, uh, is to to send q q is a, uh, a unitary factor. But if we want to distinguish various graphs, uh, let's send q to infinity or to zero. I assume in that picture, I think uh, there is another vertex that the map right? The no, last here, one down in the bottom, but also the the here? third one from bottom to up. Oh. They are the same. No, here it's q square yeah. q to minus two. Here it's q square, for yeah. example, and uh, here nothing, and no. then it goes around. Right. The cylinder doesn't cross. Right. What's bad about it? No, no, no. I, uh, I agree mm -hmm. with the now. Uh -huh. uh, okay, and then. Um, Let's uh, then organize the delta scale field. Which will lead to fishnet. Uh, namely, we send q to infinity. Ah, uh, here we have the coupling g square, yes? Everything is multiplied by the cup in the square. So we send q to infinity. Uh, g square is zero, so it's sort of a big cup limit. Uh, and we fix um, so q uh, three <coughs> possible q's as we as we see here, depending on gammas and q i uh, g. We uh, equal by definition we will denote as psi i uh, will be fixed. I hope you see here. Uh, what happens here? You see, uh, uh, this term will stay because it will be simply proportional to psi square, uh, and this of course will go away. Is very small, and all those also will go away because they are also down by factors of, of Q. Yes, in this limit. 
So you retain only one term from this from the whole uh, uh, from the whole uh, uh, product of commutators. Sorry, one question. Is G squared in Young Men's company or are the factors of adding the definition of G squared? Uh, sorry, I didn't. Is that the Young Men's company or is there a factor of adding? It's Young Men's. G, G squared okay. is Young Men's company. Q is twist factor. Yeah. So if you took Q to zero instead, you would get some quite similar thing. Yeah, yeah. You, you will retain this term in the same way. So there is chiral and not a chiral version of this limit. But they don't talk to each other if you do it. Okay, then you see what will happen with this cylinder, for example. Um, uh, if you start drawing more of Can be taken imaginary, and yes. you can take it to the infinite. Uh, gamma, the imaginary, yeah, part. imaginary infinite, yes. or imaginary are zero. Are you sure that the signs? Yeah, the signs are always managed that all the cues goes to infinity, or you, no, don't, uh, you don't care. Uh, Some cue goes to zero. It's okay also, depending on the. You AD. can always uh, arrange yes that uh, say all cues go to infinity, then to zero. So you will have only okay. three couplings. Um, so this is the idea how it works, at least in, of course, uh, I, I don't speak about it, but to make the theory conformal, even before any limit, uh, at least it, uh, and it was called conformal, you have to add so-called uh, uh, double trace counter terms, but I don't want to speak about it, it's a uh, uh, technical subject, but you can always add these counter terms to, uh, to tune the theory to the formal point. But of course, already you see that the theory will not be unitary. Uh, it's informal but not unitary. Uh, because you will take not unitary factors. Uh, uh, here, uh, not unitary uh, twist. But uh, it which means that it will be logarithmic, and it was explicitly demonstrated that the theory is logarithmic conformal field theory. Uh, uh, now, I want to describe the most general, uh, here I did this more or less describe this uh, situation with two, with two scalar fields, but what is the most general limit, uh, the Fishnet limit, where you have, uh, where you take all three couplings, say I. Um, it can be, if you go through, if you could deform all these commutators, uh, essentially you drop the uh, uh, halves of these terms, the green, uh, uh, green uh, and uh, in this limit, green uh, and gate field go away, fields go away because they don't carry the R charge, so they cannot be. Uh, boosted by this uh, Q information. Uh, so we end up with this theory, which is the most general Fishnet CFT kind of uh, uh, from the Nichols Corden Williams. You see, you have uh, three uh, scalar kinetic terms, uh, three scalars and three fermions. Uh, you have your kinetic terms, standard kinetic terms, uh, terms then you have three types of phi-4 interactions, like phi-2, phi-3, phi-2, phi-3, same as 3, 1, 1, 2, uh, with three couplings. Plus you have fermions, where the couplings are combined into these mm -hmm. products. Mm -hmm. So you have, uh, have uh, I and mean, you have look out terms. But here, of course, I omitted complex conjugate terms, the right here, but not in this section. Complex conjugate, uh, conjugate terms are gone 
you don't really see that. And you get sort of a chiral theory. Each term doesn't have its complex conjugate or Hermitian conjugate in the, under the trace. But of course, we understand that all of them are n by n matrices, all these fields, and the color, and, and c by n c matrices. Um, okay, then now I want to describe the most general uh, Feynman uh, uh, graph. Feynman graphs, which appear from this theory. Um, Sorry, one, one, one question. Is this integrable only for D, or is there hope for other dimensions as well? No, here you you can of course uh, generalize the theory to other dimensions. It will be not <coughs> integrable as it is, but it can be modified. The kinetic term can be modified. You will see it, that's the last part of the method. Okay. I will generalize. At least partially to all dimensions. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I. Um, so I want now to describe final graphs which, uh, which appear from, which come from this theory, from this system CFT. Of course, it, if we believe in the integrability of, uh, of super young mills, we also should believe in, in, in the integrability of this action. It is simply a particular limit. Uh, but how to prove it? You look at it and you don't see any signs of integrability. First of all, uh, I describe what are the final graphs. They can be uh, depicted in the following way. You have three scatters and three, three fermions, you have three couples. So you start from drawing the following lattice. Uh, each color corresponds to, to a certain... Uh, each, each index, one, two, three, corresponds to a certain slope of the lattice. So you have, for example, these fields called the closely dated of Okay, so these, they have two reactions. Uh, then I take... Uh, say the lines going in this direction. Uh, say it was also say in uh, particular direction here. The, those are X fields. And if we choose another color, yellow, uh, will be lines going in this direction. Can draw them anywhere. In the, the two first sets are more or less fixed. You just draw a regular lattice, but the third set you can uh, you can draw this yellow line anywhere, crossing it this way. So you get sort of five four vertices everywhere, quartic vertices. And for the scanners, it will be the vertices of this theory, three types of vertices corresponding to three colors. Three, uh, okay. Then, uh, now, what about fermions? With fermions, you do the following. You choose, uh, uh, you choose some closed path, and you make the line, I don't know how to know this better, uh, for example, you Uh, you pass a, here a fermionic line. It should be a closed path like this. You can also draw it somewhere else, for example, here. It should be closed lines. Both sonic and fermionic lines should be closed by obviously they carry charge. Um, okay, so you can decorate it by fermionic lines. But uh, you should ask immediately, why do we have uh, quartic interactions? Fermions have cubic vertices only. That means that we have to disentangle each vertex. For example, if you have the 
this kind of vertex. <coughs> we have to disentangle it into two uh, Yukawa vertices. For example, you have this vertex. In fact, it should be understood as um, as this two Yukawa vertices. And what is curious here in this uh, chiral theory, you can do it in a unique way. Once you have a crossing, and of course I forgot to uh, put here the directions, it's a single weight, it's a single vertex which contributes here. You choose one of those. And then, of course, the same, there are three types of these kind of crossings. For example, you can have this, cross, uh, this crossing, that's so we disentangle it as uh, this kind of So, this is the full description of the graphs, of finding graphs of this uh, plan of graphs, of course. Namely, you start from the sort of, uh, skeleton graph, a set of lines. <coughs> you can move one system of lines with respect to other two. For example, you fix several fields. You can calculate the uh, physical quantity in which has the topology of the disk, like a single trace of product of all these fields or external lines. And so you can do the following. You can move yellow lines or any other lines, any other set of lines, uh, and you can decorate in all possible ways uh, uh, by fermionic paths. And that's it. So we have to sum up this system. If you want to compute, uh, compute some quantity, we have to sum up all these kind of graphs. Uh, you already see that if you drop, uh, you see, if you put, for example, uh, Xi2, Xi1 equal Xi2 equals 0, you are left only with Xi3, which we denote by Xi. Uh, then all the fermions are gone because they contain this product. So if uh, all three terms are gone because it's contains either Xi1 or Xi2, Xi, Xi then the first two terms here from scalar interactions are gone, and only one interaction is left. So you get this uh, nice theory. Mm -hmm. um, which we call this sky, by scalar theory. Um, um, so it's simply in terms of X and Z, uh, Lagrangian of this by scalar theory is dx bar dx um, plus dz bar dz plus psi square uh, x bar z bar x z plus maybe uh, double trace term terms uh, trace trace terms but They can be always added appropriate game. Uh, so on trace of course of trace. So this is the simplest theory which was called 15 CFT. And uh, I, I'm going in the rest of half an hour to demonstrate why this theory is integrable. So this is uh, just maybe I would add that you can do the same uh, with APJM theory, the same limit which we have done uh, in our uh, paper with Caetano and uh, uh And you'll get, uh, instead of regular square lattice, you will get a regular triangular lattice with uh, three different scalars. Sorry, uh, what, what do you mean by three trace? I, 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 I was distracted here. The plus, uh, the second row. Plus ah, the trace trace. I mean, <coughs> you had the terms like, for example, trace x z, trace x bar, z bar, plus uh, trace x, uh, for example, x z 
So you are adding double trace with that? With I have to add because to make ah, okay. it to conform. So you are adding double trace. At the very beginning. You have to add these scalar terms to the twisted, if you twist superambience. Okay. Actually, this already makes the theory conformal, but uh, even with normal uh, gammas, real gamma parameters, it makes the theory uh, uh, non-unitary and logarithmic if you want to give the conformal point. But you can literally compute this couplings in terms of side. Side doesn't normalize. It doesn't normalize. For example, one can see from from the if you try to use color, if you try to, to normalize the by four vertex, you'll see that um, one vertex here is chiral and another is anti-chiral. Then this mass renormalization goes away. And all other, sorry, renormalization of xi, uh, goes away. The same, um, say, for the mass renormalization, you have this graph, <coughs> there will be one chiral and one uh, anti-chiral vertex, so one of them proportional to Q, another to 1 over Q, so it's not possible. So the theory stays conformal, but you have to also adjust these terms. Um, this property propagates all the graphs. Let's see. Okay, then now, now I want to demonstrate the integrability of this this particular theory, Sorry, for which the graph. Uh, you said that uh, if I have finite twists, that even real finite twists, the theory is logarithmic. Yes. Is that a simple physical intuition? Yeah, my intuition was that because of this chirality, things are not unitary and not invertible, and then you get logs. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, Already seen from this old paper of uh, papers of Sieg, Wilhelm, uh, uh, and Hocken, uh, they computed uh, first order perturbation theory. And they saw that there are uh, these uh, double trace terms that you have to add and to adjust to. Actually, maybe they didn't notice, but it was a trivial observation from I think our paper with. Grisha, Kotchinski, and Kozlov, in order to tune to the beta of the, to zero beta function, you have to take complex radius uh, or radius this part of this double trace couplings. So if you okay, that's that's the life. Gamma twisted. Yeah, it means it's uh, conformal only as a non-unitary theory. Okay, now mm, uh, I want to demonstrate this is really the I second. Hmm? Aren't there proposals for the dual and the twists are real and finite? And isn't there an Yeah, there is a proposal of Rogov. Uh, <coughs> I mean, what is ADS dual? Yeah. There is a uh, this construction of Frolov is double T duality. So in principle, we know something about it, uh, but uh, it's difficult to apply it to this limit because it's a weak coupling limit. So your uh, ADS space is a degen uh, degenerates into the cones uh, into a cone. For the Kishnet, I just wanted to understand what's the signal of non unitarity in the usual twist when the twists are real and so on, everything is real. Why is the theory not unitary? What happens? You mean uh, uh, from the point of view of ADS dual? For, from any point of view, I'm not just from not the used to doing deformations that are real and just theories that are but, not uh, it's conformal if you don't twist it and it, uh, then you don't have this double 
traces. But then what it, what happens? Uh, the conformal you have two conformal points. The, they move out of real axis, and in this coupling, move out of real axis. There is a pair of solutions for these couplings. And so one point is stable, another unstable, uh, but they are complex. If you want to sit in the complex, in the conformal point, you have to move out. But uh, what are the signs? I don't know. I mean, looking at the action, it's hard to say because gamma factors are unitary. So is it fair to say that the theory would be unitary, but it will not be conformal? Right on that if right? you stay on the real axis, you're right. And then there is there are these two complex points, so like this slow running, right? That yeah, that, running. that I always, it always fascinated me to consider such a theory. I think some people try it, but some other models to, to see how the trajectory passes slowly, the other trajectory passes slowly between these two points. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But on this point, uh, isn't it that when the three couplings of the three uh, twisting parameters gamma are real and also equal to themselves, or equal, then ah. this, this is a supersymmetric deformation where... Uh, yeah, I this is uh, n equals 1. If psi 1 right. uh, psi 2 psi 3 are equal, this is the case uh, when it stays supersymmetric. So, I'm and wondering in, the, in that case, uh, double cases are... Uh, Maybe already, they're absent. Already needed, because if I really think about that sector, that operator, that fish map, would retire the double trace in order, so would, would produce those infinities, that means double trace in order to be renormalized, well, that sector is protected uh, when the twistings are, are uh, so Nobody yeah. studied this question, but uh, I don't know. Maybe you still have, I think you have, still have, will have to introduce uh, double traces. Or n equals one. That, uh, then so that is a unitary theory, which is also conformal. No, it will be not unitary. Oh, should be unitary if uh, I'm conformal. If you mean the double phase terms disappear, then it will be unitary. Yeah, I, I think they will stay. If they are retired or not for equal uh, and real couple. Mm -hmm. I have not asked for this question, just didn't think about it. But an interesting question. It would be nice to discover at least one four-dimensional unitary conformal theory. I'm not supersymmetric, but so far it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, we have to sacrifice at least something. Uh, okay, now it is about the really the second part of the talk. construction of Sasha Zamolochikov uh, many, many years ago, in the, uh, uh, I think it's 1980, and he constructed uh, an integrable uh, statistical mechanical model, two-dimensional statistical mechanical model, which is actually ba uh, uh, based on On these conformal graphs. Um, so, um, suppose, uh, so here is his construction. Uh, suppose we have a set of straight lines, arbitrary set of straight lines, which appear first in the papers of Baxter. Um, All of them cross, yes, because they come at different angles. And, uh, now we dash some of the faces we dash in the following way. Uh, so we have two sub lattices, dashed and undashed by the 
of this whole thing. Now, let's define the following lattice uh, statistical mechanical model. We put vertices in the middle of these black uh, white faces, and we connect them by propagators going like this. These are the propagators uh, going through these crossings. For example, if you have um, if you have here the end of alpha between two lines, so you have, for example, xm, xn, then it will be alpha mm. It's this end between two crossing lines, and the propagator goes in. It's how you prescribe these parameters, alpha j, k. There I use to write fibers by some reasons to make it integrable. So it's, uh, it looks like a generalized Feynman graph with conformal, uh, conformal propagators, which, which can be of any power, not just square. In some particular cases, if we do the square, for example, for this fishnet, CFG as you will see, but we generalize it. Uh, okay, then, then we, uh, to demonstrate integrability, we will show that we can make moods of lines on this, on this picture. So, for example, we can take one of these white lines and move it past intersection. And we, uh, we get, <coughs> in terms of white lines, Baxter lattice, we get almost the same graph, but multiplied, uh, not graph, but uh, almost the same lattice, but multiplied by some factor, Higgs factor. But in terms of Feynman graphs, it will be some uh, substantial change, which I will describe now. <coughs> but we move from graph to graph by very simple uh, inventory moves. Since we can move it in this way, I know that it's integral. It can be brought to a more formal form of young box equations, but uh, we'll feel that it is integral if it has so, so much of freedom. Uh, okay, and the elementary move is described in the following way. For example, you have three color. Intersecting lines, we dash this part, and 
ставить the corresponding set of propagators. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Yes, it's also dashed. Uh, then we put three points here, three vertices uh, here, and we have this product of propagators. Just a piece from this picture. Now, I will show that it is equal up to some particular factor, V, which we can calculate, which will depend on various angles. Uh, uh, it is equivalent to the following picture. You see, it, it is as if we moved this line past this crossing. The, this dashed uh, areas, of course, exchange, and, uh, or, or we can move any other line. It's, the, the result will be the same. And this move is completely based on the so-called star triangle relation. Relation, uh, very useful for computing integrals. Uh, and this V is also explicit. It's a peculiar ratio of gamma functions. Like, uh, gamma, gamma D minus two, uh, or two minus A, gamma D minus two. which depends on the angles. I already prescribed how it depends. We have alpha, beta, and here we have pi minus alpha minus beta. This angle, every, ah, yeah, and of course, this fact that the sum of angles is pi is reflected here uh, by the formula a plus b plus c, uh, a plus b plus c is equal to d, yes? works only under this condition. And the integrals are conformal, mass, etc. So we can move these lines which which shows that in fact our um, if we have say one basic graph, we can by these moves pass to other graphs and we only will gain some factors, some product of these factors according to the angles which uh, 
by which they cross <laughs> each other. So, sorry about that. And the symbols of the dx, they go over the entire dynamic yes, yes, space? Yes, yes. Infinite, yes. But then on these pictures, uh, because I thought originally they were going over these cells, the symbols. No, 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 no. It, it, this is the scheme for uh, for building the graph, finding the graph. But the integral is it's at infinite space, but of course we have to regularize. All these integrals should be understood in, in the sense of regularization. After we regret that. Okay, and um, now, uh, do I have 10 minutes? Uh, yeah, 10 minutes. Uh -huh, great. Uh, and now I, I will show you that in principle we can define here a very gen general uh, mm, uh, CFT consisting of many fields, I will say six fields for example, which uh, <coughs> will describe all the sums of planar graphs of this kind, it will encode all the graphs of this kind, and as particular cases it will encode the fishnet graphs of this fishnet CFT, uh, single fishnet CFT, by standard fishnet CFT, but many more theories. So, in four dimensions, it is the this theory, in three dimensions, you can, you can discover the fishnet stemming from ABJM, and there are many more cases. Um, so, how to do it? How to generalize it? the most general uh, fishnet CFT corresponding to the Zemolochikov scheme, to any Zemolochikov scheme. And as an example, let's start from the sets of three lines. Three arbitrary lines, of course one of them is chosen zero, but uh, there are two other. Alpha we will construct a uh, uh, CFT uh, which has in particular the graph which is due to this picture, which I explained here, but also you can add many other lines uh, parallel to this, uh, any number of parallel lines. And this will be the, the full description, the dual picture in the sense of x -ray. Graphs will be the full description of the graphs of this fishnet CFT. So, mm, already you see that we have here the cubic vertex, yes? Mm -hmm. ah, I mean, of course, we'll color it like that. Uh, uh, and dash. But here already you have a cubic vertex. But then, if you add, for example, this parallel line, you see that you have this one. If you add another line, this one, you'll get, you have this pentagon here, and you'll have a quintic vertex. 
if you, for example, add another line, you will get uh, a hexagon. And that's it. So from three parallel lines, if you move the lines, you can get only uh, hexagons, uh, pentagons, uh, uh, rectangles, and triangles. That's the whole set of vertices. And now we want to construct the CFT, just uh, introducing all these vertices, but with uh, and the fields, some, there will be some additional fields, but with the, the correct conformal weights. Um, we do it in the following way. Um, first of all, like in fishnet uh, coming from out of young mills, we introduce three scalar fields, x, y, and z, uh, with the weights, so here are the weights, uh, a, b, and d over 2 minus a minus b, that means that, for example, Kinetic term for x will be trace uh, x bar uh, t over 2 minus a x. As you see, in general, it's not local term. But we don't care in conformal theory about locality. We don't have it anyway. Yes? And there are no particles in this theory. So, okay, I don't see what is bad about non local actions would describe the formal theories, but the correlation radius is infinite anyway. Okay, and etc. Do the same for these. So kinetic terms described this way. So and then you have to so this field um, help to introduce uh, Say 60 vertices, 60 vertices like corresponding to hexagon in this picture. But since we have more of vertices, we have to produce new fields. We introduce sort of dual fields: little x, little y, and little z, which have dimensions, dual <coughs> dimensions, d over two minus uh, minus original dimensions, minus a minus b, uh, d over two. Minus a, uh, no, d over two minus a, d over two minus b, and a plus b. With corresponding kinetic terms. And then we introduce vertices. So, so vertices. There are like 18 vertices to complete this homological picture with three sets of intersecting lines. Uh, it will be a uh, trace x, y, z, uh, x bar, y bar, z bar. Uh, this is 60 vertex. Then there will be a two cubic vertices, trace x bar, y bar, z, and trace x, y, z bar in these notations. And then uh, you can construct, uh, for example, quitic vertices by replacing pairs. For example, you can replace x, y pair by, by uh, say y, z pair by y. By x, y, y, z, by little z. You see that it carries corresponding charge. And by the way, there is a balance of u1 charges because we have u1 to the cube thing still left. And so you get from here, trace um, z, Z 
dx bar y bar z bar. Okay, and you can see that you can you you, uh, you replace closest neighbors, the matrices, so they are ordered closest neighbors by this scheme, and you get uh, six quintiplets vertices, so many quintiplets. Then you can continue the same replacement. You, you get quartic vertices, like for example, you trace uh, x, y, already you have two little letters and two big letters, for example, this vertex. There are nine of them, nine quartic. You have to add many double, double trace terms to, uh, to make it conformal also, and you describe completely uh, this homologic of scheme, Baxter homologic of Baxter to say because this homologic of people used to be in the same way as Baxter Baxter did it for eight vertex model. Uh, and now we can play with this of course huge number of fields and bring this fully integrable theory. I hope I convinced you that it's integrable. <coughs> integrable, let me describe it why it's integrable. Because you can fix some quantity, for example, external, you fix external legs, and you compute all the graphs for this quantity. Uh, you start from a base graph, as, it, as I call it, some particular graph, maybe regular triangle lattice, for example, uh, like, uh, and then you start moving the lines on Baxter lattice to change the graphs. Each move brings you only another factor of v. So all other graphs in this quantity you sum up in, a, in an easy way. If you know the answer for a base graph, which will be, which can be very complicated, yes, very few of these graphs have been calculated. Uh, but then the rest is very simple. You just sum up with corresponding couplings. All these vertices, of course, have their own couplings. You sum up with these combinations of couplings the products of factors of v. In this way, you compute quite crazy graphs, quite crazy quantities, I would say. Um, okay, so not about the boundary condition, but the infinity? Uh, boundary condition for what? For what do you mean by So you did think very locally, right? With this star triangle, but what do you do with the infinity? Well, what, what is infinity? Uh, these are, <coughs> no, for example, if I stop here, already I fix vertices and I. I compute particular quantity. Yes. It's a particular uh, graph of disk topology, for example. I simply can cut out a piece of the Baxter lattice and put to, uh, and uh, it corresponds, but there is one to one correspondence to this graph. The rest is I'm, I'm moving Baxter lines, and the graphs are changing. New vertices appear or disappear, etc. And uh, finally, I only want to conclude that uh, now all these particular cases are clear. For example, if we retain, we can retain only uh, 60, 60 vertices, then we will get regular triangular lattice. enough to define, for example, the Baxter uh, equations, etc. And finally, we can get also hexagonal lattice. Since we have triangular 
since we have hexagonal vertices, but you have here, and you have um, uh, no, same for this Then you have this also a hexagonal lattice. Hexagonal lattice, unfortunately, no six dimensional field. It's a six dimensional field properly, so you know. It's like a flat field interaction. But unfortunately, there is the mother theory, the superconformal super mother theory in six dimensions for uh, for this fish net CFT is not known. I tend to ask specialists. Maybe one day somebody will construct such a theory. And uh, I think that's it. Should I give some conclusion? Uh, the conclusion is that. Uh, Ah, maybe one thing I wanted to say. That of course, we are after this general dynamical fishnet. Uh, I call it dynamical fishnet because you can also move lines. Not only you have fixed, or not only you have fixed uh, rectangular lat uh, lattice or some other lattice, but you can also move lines. And in fact, you have many more graphs. So I call it dynamical fishnet. It seems to me that mm, uh, first of all, we hope. We discuss it with Enrico now. We hope that uh, the most general fishnet with three scatters, three fermions, uh, also uh, is integrable according to the scheme. Uh, fermions are easy to include, or at least partially. We know how to include fermions into this picture. Again, uh, there are more general uh, star triangular relation uh, which include fermions. But um, my hope is that it's only the first step to um, discovering where the integrability of n equals 4 n mills comes from. So I would uh, fantasize about uh, uh, some hidden uh, uh, regular lattice structure of the graphs, which is hidden in the whole n equals 4 n mills. Uh, it is simply, uh, it is simply, seen, it's explicitly seen in this fishnet limit, but maybe it is uh, uh, also not. It's well, well hidden, but existing in the full theory. Okay, thank you. So I am a bit familiar with the integrability in massive theories, with the usual young bugs where uh, the start, the terminology of uh, beautiful start of two dimensions and so on, where uh, you may say using crossing uh, at the level of S matrix, we, we, we understand what do we mean by integrability. Now, I was not aware of this. So if in a CFT, there is some sort of uh, generalized sort of terminology uh, of young uh, move that tells you when it is integrable. Can you say more in general what is the prescription? So instead of looking at rest matrix, you should look at some yeah, it's uh, a bit uh, 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 It's not a traditional representation of integrability, but yeah. you can, uh, I don't know, using, for example, uh, say you can define the R matrix, which is Triangle of uh, rectangle of propagators and put some weights uh, in spectral parameters. There are x1, x2, x3, x4, and so the sub matrix. Particular propagators, I don't know, u plus one half, u minus one half, uh, some particular weights. And then you can, using Precise exactly the same uh, moves, the whole of cluster. You can prove that um, you can prove the young cluster equation in such a way you have these R matrices. You integrate uh, these points, and uh, since you can move this line through. We will get this in 
Zucker family. Yeah, sorry. More or less how to do it traditionally. Yeah. No, uh, the point is that you can kind of pass from one to another by uh, Baxter, yeah. uh, by, uh, sorry, by star triangle. First you, instead of this triangle, you take the star, then you have here three lines. You replace it by triangle, and you bring both this and that picture to one single. You prove the... No, what, what, what I mean is the following. In the usual massive case, I understand this move by simply there's no particle production, the any scattering is a two to two, and uh, you can argue that at the end uh, you, oh, yeah. there is no you, you can move it this line. Yeah, but this is end. already a very physical integrability. You speak about as matrix and sigma yeah. models. Now the fact is there is some sort of a vague intuition of this move that you can do. Well, what is the roughly physical intuition that, that an integral CFT you should be able to do this move. I mean, this is what I don't uh, catch. Well, the, the, it's, uh, it's young Baxter, yes? Uh, we also draw it like that. And any, as you say, ma massive theory in two dimensions, uh, if you construct the S matrix, it will be also based on, uh, on the solution of this equation, only the mm, this dressing factor will be defined already by intensity, crossing, etc. But you always start even in sigma models from solving the young box per equation. Let me just make a trivial comment that uh, it's two-dimensional integrability because planar, it's about the planar limit, right? So it's like an equals plus. So it's about the world shift. It's not about being a d-dimensional theory. Right? All well, the graphs are... are all yeah, the graphs are planar. Yeah, yeah maybe planar. It, this is a misunderstanding. The graphs are planar. I only play with planar graphs. I draw them all this on the blackboard. So it's a statistical mechanics of planar graphs uh, on the plane. So the, the variables leave. Why does it make uh, uh, d dimensional? The variables leave in d dimension, but the graph itself is drawn in two dimensions. So integrability would always be about the world shift theory of the string dual of this theory if it exists. Not about the, right. yeah, it's, no, so it's like an equals four, right? When it's an integrability by saying that the string material is integrable, and it's about that two dimensional theory. And you should look at this worship theory as a massive theory, but this is well, so massive or not, but you could have scattering in these two dimensions that is factorized, and then you could do it to this kind of picture. Yeah, in a certain gauge, it will be massive, uh, artificially massive from the world sheet. Very general question about the claim that was in the beginning of the talk. I think it's not so well addressed, as far as I know. That is integrability of the gamma Lefort theory. So, one thing is uh, taking the equations for the spectrum of, of uh, an almost dimension n equals to 4 and deforming them by some twist. But uh, do we have, uh, is there any uh, rigorous uh, identification between these equations? and the actual anomalous dimension in the form theory, or it is only conjecture? No, no, it's only analogy. It's, uh, I think we did, we uh, generalized quantum spectral curve with Dimo Wallin and uh, uh, Sebastian Laurent in our paper, uh, but we actually, we were uh, motivated by spin chain. In the spin chain, it's the usual twist. You have uh, wave function, which is not periodic but uh, uh, quasi periodic, this certain factor, which is similar to this Q factor. Uh, and it, it's liter literally the same in the spin chain limit when in one loop for example, approximation. Uh, so, and then you have the symmetry. You have uh, your uh, R symmetry, which is uh, SO6. And you know that uh, how these factors can appear uh, from a point of view of symmetry in the formulation of quantum spectral curve. And it seems to be almost unique possibility, but there is no proof. Nothing is proven there in the full deal. Except the I, 
activation theory. Some perturbatively, even just uh, some uh, good. No, perturbatively, you see it clearly that well, it's, uh, the, it's just the quasi periodicity of uh, wave function of spin chain. So, for any conform, for any gamma deform theory at the conformal point, fixed point, uh, one can say that uh, perturbatively is correct to identify gamma deform quantum spectral curve solution with the spectrum for every yes, possible case. Yes. 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 Okay. That's this at one loop for the size of the spin chain. This is. Absolutely analogous. And also you see that you can twist the spin chain at any place. It doesn't, it's sort of topological, it doesn't depend on between which two spins you put this twist or you, you distribute it. And I demonstrated on, uh, at the beginning of my talk on the, the cylindric planar graph, graph that it's also doesn't matter, only the topology of your propagated lines matter whether they circle around cylinder or, or they or not. Uh, but uh, the final graphs themselves are the same, but they are sort of now disentangled. The graphs which would come without parameters, now they have parameter Q, which sorts out some, distinguishes some graphs from other graphs. There are no more questions, so thank you.